You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. No! complete cluster f uh, this is the uh, christmas episode of your football radio you for uh you have fart news is what it is I, I literally could not get these damn mics to work somebody was fucking with my system there you go i, re- I dropped the first f-bomb actually i've been dropping them for the last 40 let's see uh uh yeah an hour actually an hour trying to get these microphones to damn work and for the love of Pete, it's Christmas. Come on, somebody help me here. Both microphones. I have a uh, Rode Podcaster, and I also have a Blue Yeti. Neither one of those bitches wanted to work. Freaking frustrating. This is what we're working with here. I think I uh, I left my PC on overnight, you know. And a uh, funny story. So yesterday, I was... I know you guys don't like hearing stories, all right? But you're going to listen to this, damn it. Yesterday, I was like, damn, what a great idea. I was going to take every damn interview I ever had on UFO Buster Radio, put it together into a complete show, and torture people with Christmas music in between each one. And, uh, but, you know, something happens when you drink Hennessy, and, and that is that, uh, some, these, you know, things just become really large, really huge, unsurmountable. To be honest, because after the first interview that I went through, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die doing this. That's the Hennessy speaking. So, word to the wise. When you're working on a project, don't drink Hennessy first. Do it after, you know, after your project or like when you're three quarters into it. Then you uh, can use it as a way to celebrate. But I was uh, I was ahead of the game with the Hennessy. I started way before even working on the project so for fuck's sake that went right out the window merry christmas to everyone it is uh still christmas here in uh the u.s of a uh yeah even on the um good old-fashioned east coast still christmas there as well for the next 15 fucking minutes um still christmas here in texas so merry christmas to y'all hope everyone had a great holiday even if you don't celebrate it you know come on at least at least you knew someone that did you could have uh Taking part in the season. You might not believe in Christmas, but it's a damn holiday. So enjoy it. (sighs) Bring cheer to others. That's really what it's about, to be honest. Uh, Just uh, sharing those good wishes. Uh, It has been a rough year for many people, uh, especially those that lost loved ones thanks to Wuhan and the uh, COVID-19 madness, Shittergate. But um, hopefully 2021 will be better. You know, we got these vaccines. Only some side effects, you know, like your first, might, your, your face might turn blue. You'll lose your tallywhacker. And, um, you know, breast enlargement might be a good one for some. But if you're a guy, that's going to suck. But, you know, a few side effects there. But, yay, you deal with it. At least, you know, after a few hours, you'll be 
ready to take on any strain, according to the government, any strain of COVID-19. Who fucking knows? We're going to keep on getting hit with those. But I got some stories to talk about. Got some things that came up. And I figured, you know what? Why don't I do a Friday show? I mean, hell, I've got nothing better to do. Christmas is almost over. The gifts have been handed out. The eggnog's gone down the gullet. And uh, actually right now I'm working on just something simple. <laughs> no alcohol. Because then it's like, for fuck's sake, I can't do it. I can't do it at all. Uh, the one article that we're going to talk about is someone put together a string of alien findings. Right. Not aliens, but indication of aliens in an article for 2020. You know, what really pisses me off is that not everything happened in 2020. Jeez Louise, come on, keep the story straight. That's all I'm asking for, just keep it straight. And then we got one on John Brennan, and then the Milky Way. Yes, the wonderful Milky Way full of dead bodies. Let the bodies hit the floor. I know most of you know that. Uh, what's up, Degree Man and Gamevid, who are here live and uh, chilling out with uh, old Moonraker. Well, yeah, old Moonraker. I'm actually with the uh, Tempest Universe dropping the whole Moonraker thing. Yeah, I guess I'll use my real name. Yeah, believe it or not, that's just crazy. But that's what I'll do. But anyway, you have to listen to the Tempest Universe to figure that out. So let's let the bodies really hit the floor with this uh, first song, and then we'll get right into it. Merry Christmas to y'all. Gamebit saying his uh, his Bluetooth's not working right. I have mic problems, and uh, Green Man says Santa done fucked up everybody's tech. I believe it. There is something that uh, just happened, and I don't even think it was Santa. It might have been that other guy. What do they call him? Krampus. Hey, don't it. fucking scream at me. Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you with your fucking forty eight percent body fat. And- So just fresh off the press, someone just uh, joined the YouTube channel, uh, Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown, guess what? You got caught live joining and subscribing to the uh, the new the uh, the Tempest Universe because I changed the name of it, the Tempest Universe YouTube. So welcome aboard if you're listening. You'll probably unsubscribe by 
the first of January, for fuck's sake. That's just the way it goes with YouTube. It's just crazy. Crazy. This article, Extraterrestrial Evidence, 10 Incredible Findings About Aliens in 2020. Um, this is a pretty cool article. If you're, I think this is a one shitter take. You know, there's some articles that I've gone over that's like, you know, two, three, four shitter takes. Like, literally, if you uh, get on that porcelain throne, you know, two, three times a day. I know people who go a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. But this is a one shitter take. Like, you can go through these 10, uh, especially if you've kept up with this uh, this thing about extraterrestrial evidence. If, if you has stayed in tune. It's a one shitter take. Now, if for some reason you've been busy, you know, with life, because you've been trying to get your hustle on during COVID, then this might be a two shitter take. Um, but I'm sure you'll visit the the porcelain gods more than once in one day. So take your time. The link is in the description. Check it out. Now, the very first one, of course, they're going to lead off with is the uh, story about that signal from Proxima Centauri, which we talked about, I think, this week. 980 megahertz signal coming from 4.2 light years away. Um, and, of course, this particular sun has a planet in a habitable zone. So they're all excited about it. Here's the thing about a lot of these articles, and really every single one of them has the whole yin-yang thing. You know, you got someone that are all in it. You know, they will throw the kitchen sink, their mom, their dad, their dog, even their fucking grandparents, and put the money, put the house on the line too. You know, that they believe this is real. And then quickly, as soon as this stuff hits the press, someone's on the other side doing the very same thing, saying, no, you're wrong. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know, know what you're looking at. You're reading into things. And yeah, so this first article with Proxima Centauri, of course we read and uh, researched that SETI is saying no. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you probably, you're listening to our own signals, you dumbasses. That's pretty sad. Like, really, there's no professional courtesy there. Like, if you're literally calling somebody out, because we, because you're listening to a planet four point light years away, but your dumbass is actually listening to the Tonight Show reruns. I mean, come on, that's not cool. Can't you pull the guy aside and just talk to him and say, "Hey, hey, Robert, you know, I think you fucked up. I think that uh, what you're listening to is reruns of Howdy Doody, and uh, it's not really aliens." But no, they got to go and respond in the national media. So, yeah, fuck off. Uh, the other one was the uh, the Russian planet. Yeah, Venus. The planet is claimed by the Russians and the discovery of phosphine in the clouds, which are on the planet Earth, basically a byproduct of living organisms. That was exciting, right? We thought for sure we had hit the pay dirt. Oh my God, see, you know, like you throw it in people's faces. Life is everywhere, even in hell planet. Even on this damn planet, it's hot as hell that not any living being was even remotely thought of as being able to live. All of a sudden, we have phosphine in the clouds. So there could be some kind of organism, bacteria or something just hanging out in the clouds, dropping the phosphine, and it happened to be discovered. What even in that story? What happened a few weeks later? Somebody sent a ship by, and they're like, "Oh, there's no damn phosphine here." No, you're wrong. How did this happen? How, how, fuck! How did that happen so quickly? That's what I want to know. How did you so quickly find out there's no phosphine? And how the fuck did we know that the ship, that second probe? that went through, actually was equipped to even sniff the air for phosphine. That's what I want to know. But you don't get those kind of details. You really don't. So that's still really up in the air, to be honest. It is really still up in the air. Um, We'll see what happens, right? Because I'm sure the Russians are not going to let this go. 
They are not going to, that is their damn planet. And for fuck's sake, there's going to be something inhabiting that bitch. I'm going to be honest about that. So phos- <laughs> phosphine is the issue. Um, well, here's the thing. And, and it is, um, it's funny because for the longest time, uh, people have always said, and, you know, we've said this on this podcast as well, that that science really has to get away from thinking the human way. They have to be a lot more open to the possibility that life can exist in other forms, not necessarily H2O and oxygen. There's got to be other ways that life exists on this planet and there are many studies which is actually one that's being talked about in this article as well that are showing that even bacteria here on our planet can survive without the conditions that they live in today right now in our little blue hole in the wall there was a uh, a study back in May, and we might have talked about this, but they took E. coli and yeast. And what they did was that they uh, placed the bacteria inside of a flask filled with either pure hydrogen or pure helium. The bacteria still continue to thrive. They literally changed over to just continue to go about their business on pure hydrogen or helium. The notice, uh, the things that they noticed was that uh, they grew a little slower. They weren't sp- you know, spreading like crazy, but they were surviving. So here we are our, on our oxygen-rich environment. We have two of uh, known bacteria that were able to survive in conditions that uh, normally we wouldn't think they would because they originate from the planet Earth. So what if you have bacteria that already grows in some place that's hydrogen-rich or some other gas? And there you go. There is life existing, not a carbon copy of what we have here. So there, there is scientists out there that are looking at this from many, many different angles, and they need to. It is serious business because if we continue to get stuck looking things from the human perspective, we're not going to find anything. And that's just the way it is. The second out of this world <laughs> uh, alien, you know, I guess is a, more like a theory, I guess, right? It was Amuamua. You know, as much as we went through this, Amuamua was two years ago, but it is still in conversation today. Every week, someone is posting some article about this damn rock. Because they caught everybody with their big girl panties down. They did. And then what? Then there was uh, the big chase. Because this damn rock did not look like any other rock that goes through our solar system. Completely different. It had no tail. There wasn't shit coming off of it. It was... uh, elongated, moving extremely fast. And then for us, who uh, like to talk about E.T., we found our a brotherhood, a, a connection to Avi Loeb from Harvard University. Of all places, Harvard University. Astrophysicist. And what did he say? <laughs> really? This dude. Like he went out there like pure butt naked and just... He just said it, that maybe Oumuamua was, instead of a comet, an interstellar visitor, an alien probe pushed by a light sail. Can you imagine that? A sail, super, super thin, that could be pushed by solar radiation. How amazing. So many things about Oumuamua confused the fuck out of science, but the thing was traveling too damn fast for anyone to get a really good look at it. It was in and out. Then all of a sudden, a few months later, we get another interstellar object, but oh, wait a minute. This one looks like every other comet that's out there. 
So now we're back to normal again. You know, what now we know what the human condition says, which I think was bullshit. I think they really try to pass a fast one on us. But we won't know because we have no idea where the hell Amuamu is going. And for that matter, we don't know how many of these interstellar objects are coming in, how many of them are carrying interstellar bacteria and organisms. But we're not there yet. We're still trying to get there. We're not at the point where we can actually uh, talk about that. Hell, we just got stuff coming by, uh, being dropped off from uh, the moon and uh, Hayabusa too. So we'll see what happens. I just, I just have a feeling that any of those discoveries are really going to be tight-lipped, to be honest. Because space, uh, space is not international yet. Space is a national thing. So the Japanese are going to hold on to their secrets. You know, for fuck's sake, you know, the Chinese will going to, they're going to hold on to their shit. And so will the Russians. So, and the United States too. We're not out of it. It's a, it's a true thing. Every, it's a national thing. It's not international. So we'll see what happens. If maybe science can, uh, you know, bypass those borders and blue tape and political bullshit so that we can all find out what the hell was on those two, Hayabusa 2, and what came down from the moon. It's going to be interesting. I did see an article when I was looking for stuff to talk about today that actually said that the uh, Chinese used exosuits. Look at them. Fancy as fuck the Chinese they are. Exosuits in order to recover the moon droppings that they that they got from the moon. Listen, the, the truth is, there's there's organisms on the moon. I'm a, I put my money on it. They they might not they might not tell us, but there's organisms up there, and we're not talking about uh, fully walking, suited up, needing some kind of a breathing apparatus, carrying a laser type of organism. But there's microorganisms. I, I just don't see how they could not be. Let's just put that, let's just put that out there for 2021. That eventually one of these fuckers is going to tell us that. Because uh, they just have to. They just, just got to be stopped fucking around. What's up to Dave, who just joined the uh, the live chat. Welcome, Dave. Dave down in Australia. Um, Dave, actually, can it, actually, they, uh, I'm surprised that this uh, story wasn't in here. But, of course, you know, a lot of stuff coming out of the, uh, the Parks Observatory down there. A lot of stories this year that connected the Parks Observatory to a lot of things. But it didn't make this particular article. So, one to two shitter article. Check the links in the description. And um, check it out. It's a good read. It's short. Nothing too fancy. But, uh, you know, once you're in the shitter, you can't really get too into things. Because you might not finish off correctly.
fucking scream at me? Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you. With your fucking 48% body fat. And you know, if, uh, if 2020 has shown me anything, is that uh, shit can be really fucked up. Uh, I am hoping that 2021 will be different with the uh, the Tempest universe and still with the Dark Horde. Um, I'm hoping. But as you can see today, one hour before the show, struggling with damn technology, what what do I have to do? I just, it's, that's my inner child just screaming out. It really is. Because, you know, when I started podcasting, I figured I will do this until... I croak, you know. I don't, I know people don't get the humor sometimes. They really don't. But that's because a lot of times they got their head up their asses. And, and maybe they, it takes about, you know, five, six episodes to get your head out your ass and understand that I support the idea of extraterrestrial life. I'm still on the fence when it comes to visitation by E.T., but for fuck's sake, we cannot be the only ones in this universe. And there's just no way that we've been sending out so much damn signal, so many signals from our little blue planet that no one hears it. Come on. You just got to be kidding me. I just I just don't know sometimes. I really don't. Overachieving aliens likely annihilated themselves, according to a study. Here we go. Um, it's funny how they dance around the subject of Galia life somewhere fucking today. It's like it's it's every other time. Oh, we might get him in the future, just not now. Oh, shit. The freaking Milky Way was teeming with life. Like everywhere. Uh, but not now. You You really still have some people in science, and this is actually from NASA, that are stuck on the idea that that humanity is the only game in the Milky Way. We'll just leave it at the Milky Way because I'm sure they think we're the only game in the universe. But they're talking about the Milky Way right here. So this article, which was uh, went up uh, to the New York Post, and pretty much is everywhere. And it's weird because people are presenting this in all different kind of ways. They really are. So they're saying the aliens they don't kill themselves off because they they got all this technology. So researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and uh, and the California Institute of Technology, shit, they need they need an H in there somewhere. Yeah, between California and Institute, uh, they've summarized that uh, since past studies show a civilization's technology technological advances will in- inevitably lead to complete destruction and biological degeneration. Any intelligent life previously in the Milky Way has already likely killed itself off. Why? Why does it have to why does it have to go that way? Why does it have to go that route? That just rig you so no civilization when reaching certain levels of technology can actually survive it. That's nuts. Completely nuts. And the, the quote is the quote here is if intelligent life is likely to destroy themselves, it is not surprising that there is little to no intelligent life elsewhere. This is what the uh, researchers said earlier uh, in this study that was posted in December. For fuck's sake, is it really that e- easy to discount the idea of alien life? Why? Why is it that easy? And how did these people get so fucking programmed? Did any of them ever see E.T. when they were growing up? Did any of them see any of those uh, alien cartoon shows? Fuck, did you read a comic book? Most of the heroes in comics, uh, comics, uh, they're they're fucking aliens. Look at Superman. He's an alien. (sighs) Yeah, I, I don't understand this. Why are they so programmed to believe this? But there is there is a sentence in here that is um, that really really speaks to ancient aliens. The whole fucking thing speaks to ancient aliens. Let me just put that out there. The link is in the description. This is really a one shitter article, by the way. You can blow through this, literally. They really 
certified the idea of ancient aliens. Like, you don't even need to watch the fucking series anymore with hopes. Because you, you want there to be ancient aliens. Because in, in this study, it appears that NASA kind of tipped their hat and said, Yeah, fucking ancient aliens, we're everywhere. And this is what they say. They theorize that humans are late to the party because peak conditions for life to develop likely occurred about 8 billion years after the galaxy formed. We emerged around 13.5 billion years after the Milky Way uh, came about. So according to them, we basically missed all the alien party. Like, uh, well, what are we looking at here? Uh, da, 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 da. Like about five, five billion years ago. So they're saying that about five and a half billion years ago, there was ET shit everywhere. Like they were like communicating. There were civilizations of aliens all over the Milky Way. And then 5.5 billion years before humanity came on the scene, they're all fucking dead. Maybe they all went into this whole galactic war. Maybe that's why... We make movies like Star Wars and shit like that because it's in our DNA that eventually we're going to go to space, we're going to find a bunch of other fuckers, and we're going to blow each other up to make room for the next set of fuckers to show up, you know, 13 billion years from now. How weird is that? But basically, listen, we heard it from the horse's mouth. The science people, the guys that don't believe there's ancient, uh, there's life now, believe in ancient aliens. Believe that there was a period in our galaxy where there was aliens everywhere. Having a good old time. But not now. It's sad. I mean, they're so close-minded. It is ridiculous. Like, did anybody peer-review this paper and just ask a question? It's like, why, why, why are you being such an asshole? Why are you being so close-minded? Why can't you get your head out your ass? And realize that you're saying that all of life in the Milky Way ended. And then out of the blue, little humanity, little monkeys, shed most of their fur. And were looking up to the skies and decided to evolve. Out of the, the muck, the destruction, the, uh, the death-filled galaxy... That is the Milky Way. It's retarded. I'm going to be honest. I know that's not PC to say, but for fuck's sake, what were you thinking? So, ancient aliens? Thumbs up from NASA. Aliens today? No way. I don't know. It's a it's a tough one, really. Only tough because they're, they're, they continue to show how close-minded they are. But the funny thing is, is that they're actually talking about it. Somebody's actually sitting back there making this shit up and going with it as they do and actually putting a paper together to publish. So it's not like these conversations are not happening in places like NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. For fuck's sake, why don't you guys just stick to fucking rockets? That's what you need to do. That's why commercial enterprise is taking over all your shit. Stop fucking talking about aliens. Your propulsion. Do what your name says. Propol. You <laughs> propose. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. Uh, yeah, so that's crazy. That's the article. Check it out. It's in the description. Oh, shit. I'll never visit uh, JPL, that's for sure. Probably have. They'll probably be waiting for me at the door just to teach me a lesson.
I've been seeing some random tweets over uh, Christmas Eve, actually, that Lou Elizondo um, is leaving to the Stars Academy. How crazy is that? What I I have not been able <laughs> to. Uh, besides the tweet, I haven't found anything that says for sure that that's the case. That Lou Elizondo is kicking rocks. Um, but what a what a strange place that is to be, right? Because he can come out. He can come out and give all kind of fucking reasons why he's leaving TTSA. If that's the case, again, I haven't found anything to support that, but. Imagine if you leave. So you're the guy who ran off. Ran off. You grabbed the videotapes, the VHS tapes. You ran off. You shut. You put that shit under your, your chest, uh, under your armpits, and ran the fuck out of there, you know, from the Department of Defense because you're going to train some people on it. And then out of that is born to the Stars Academy because for fuck's sake, no one w- would give two flying fucks about uh, Mr. Blink-182 if it wasn't for those videos. The Go Fast, uh, the Tic Tac, and uh, the Fleer video. No one would really care about No one would give two shits about them. Really. They wouldn't be as popular. They wouldn't be opening things. But how weird that the company that really was resting on your thievery, basically, to say... Uh, don't get upset, folks. I know you guys love yourself some Calizando. But that that company then signs these contracts with the government for who knows what, to be honest. Because the story was, it was meta material. We're going to give you all this money for the shitty-ass, fake-ass meta material that you found. And, um, and then everything goes quiet. You don't hear very much else about it. And then all of a sudden, rumor is Lou is uh, is skipping town. How weird is that? You would think the money's coming in now. This is when I would stay. This is when I would become the Lou. Like, li- literally, I'd be the Lou. Like, I'd be running the whole fucking thing. Like, I'd take over. I'd be kicking people the fuck to the side. Because the millions are coming in. But he's He's leaving. How weird is that? I, didn't, I don't understand. I'm just, uh, I'm perplexed. I'm completely crazy. Now, I did go on to his uh, Twitter channel, his uh, his postings as of late, and there he is, good old Lou. He's just driving around, giving people the old Merry Christmas salutes and uh, wishing people a Happy New Year and stuff like that, just like a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. So, <laughs> I don't know. Did he quit or did he not quit? Somebody fucking tell me already. I want to know. What's going down with TTSA in 2021? This last one actually came from a uh, podcast interview, believe it or not. And I I don't uh, I don't have the name of the podcast, but this is the former CIA director who apparently says we should be open-minded about uh, UFOs. Huh. Isn't that fascinating? Why should we? Why should we be (laughs) open-minded about it? Like, really? Come on, Director Brennan. Former Director Brennan. You know that this uh, the world has been open-minded for a very long time. The world has been on this shit. It is you. Your colleagues. You guys are the ones that need to be open-minded, not the fucking world. The world knows about it. We've known for years, decades, hundreds of years. Cave paintings, dude. Do you not watch cable? He probably does not have Netflix. He does not. He's not the kind of uh, Netflix and chill kind of guy, apparently. Because he would have known that shit, too. Really, he has, like, no even, not even cable. Because, you know, he probably thinks the Russians are watching him through the TV. You know, that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, (laughs) uh, apparently he was on this podcast and he was asked about, you know, how he would approach, you know, uh, deciphering uh, the cause or the meaning behind some of the UFO videos that were captured by the Navy pilots. Uh, You know who those are. 
and he says that the uh, the videos were eyebrow raising. I got I got a picture of him, you know, completely stoic, no freaking emotion in his face at all, and just his eyebrows pop up, and not even both, only one, like halfway. When he uh, when he saw these videos, you know, he might like maybe mutter like interesting. You know, something like that. Like he's Spock or some shit like that. No. That is, um, that really isn't the, what we were looking for there. I, and then I picture him. That's probably the way he said it. But he was probably like kicked his chair over. He like swiped everything the fuck off his desk. Started tearing off his clothes. Because it was over. And then he like tried to run to jump out the window. But it's bulletproof. So he bounced right off. And uh, he uh, regained his consciousness in his He's back. <laughs> he's back to normal again. You know, just need a little knock on the head. Uh, so yeah, so he's pretty much saying, "Hey, listen, uh, we have to ensure." Here's a quote from that podcast: "We have to ensure that you have as much data as possible in terms of visual and also different types of maybe uh, technical collection of sensors that you have at the time." Um, listen, what the fuck more do you need? You had pilots, you had witnesses, you had warships, you had systems, radars, you had all kind of shit on this Tic Tac incident. Specifically, you had the whole damn flotilla out there. What the fuck more do you need? Now, there is even one part where he says, uh, maybe it's possible that uh, we need to figure out these are some kind of atmospheric uh, situation is causing this. How the fuck? Really? A little weather disturbance really took the most advanced radar that was being tested at that time, along with these F-22s and the human eyeballs that were all watching this. It was all a weather condition, an anomaly that happened. No. No. That uh, that really is when he put his foot in his mouth, to be honest, because he was going back to the swamp days. Just ridiculous. Uh, he went on to say that uh, yeah, various weather conditions could cause some kind of phenomena on ground base or ground based phenomena that could help explain what's being seen in the sky. No, you you just should have just kept that on the inside. Um, there was another question that said, "What do you think is the most likely hypothesis to explain UFO sightings?" So the key word is. What is the most likely hypothesis? <laughs> this was his answer. I think it's a bit of uh, presumptuous and arrogant for us to believe that there's no other form of life anywhere in the entire universe. What uh, what that might be is subject to a lot of different views. Well, listen, you need to get together with JPL and fucking talk to them about that. Because they've got issues. And they actually published it just so that you can read it and rise your raise your other eyebrow, for fuck's sake. He then continued to say, but I think some of the phenomena we're going to be seeing, seeing meaning in the future, continues to be unexplained and might in fact be some type of phenomena that is a result of something that we don't yet understand and that could involve some type of activity that some might say constitutes a different life form. <sighs> yeah, he said that. He actually said that. They have it recorded. It may constitute a different form of life. A different life form. One that uses phosphine and shits in the clouds. Nobody knows, right? But here you got someone again in government saying that they're open to the idea that possibly there is life out there that's not dumb and single-celled. How amazing is that? Now, Brennan, I mean, he's, he's, he's a government guy. Director of Central Intelligence, the CIA, counter-terrorist center in the early 90s. Like, this guy, he's not no Johnny-come-lately the guy's been in government. Barack Obama approached him in 2008 concerning the possibility of becoming director of the CIA. He also uh, helped 
Obama with Homeland Security, counterterrorism, for four years after that. And he, uh, what is it, uh, Obama nominated him in 2013 to uh, succeed David Petraeus in taking the uh, the role of director of CIA. Uh, let's, let's be honest. He probably already has information. He's not fucking telling us. So it is what it is. But to, for him to end with that, that uh, some type of activity that might constitute a different form of life is uh, is telling. Because back in the day, you know, 30, 40 years ago, not one fucker would say that, especially not publicly, that anything out there could constitute alien life or life different from those on this planet. But now we got people coming out the woodwork, like uh, Professor Chaim out of Israel. Again, here's someone else who a uh, high-ranking person within the Israeli government, and all of a sudden he's in his uh, <laughs> uh, mid-80s writing a book, and half of it is about fucking aliens. What the fuck is going on? Does he have Alzheimer's? What's going on? Has he lost his last and fourth and fifth marble? Are the screws loose? Because it could happen when you get uh, that high up in age. You start seeing all kinds of shit. But maybe, maybe this story continues to evolve. Maybe finally, you know, it's like what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And for so many people to regurgitate the same story about the history of alien contact and human beings and the United States and blah, 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 schmackety, schmackety, there's smoke there. So there, there's something. There is something to that. We just can't put our fingers on it. Thanks to uh, disinformation, to be honest. That's how all that shit got started. Disinformation is hiding the truth. But apparently we have the truth. It's there somewhere. We just got to figure out what the fuck it is and get ready for what's coming. Hopefully, we get some form of answer in the next four, you know, three, four months or something like that. When this so-called the Pentagon Task Force on UAPs, this report comes out, which I, I still feel like it's not going to see the light of day, but who knows? 2021 might be the year that uh, we get that uh, that little morsel. We get that little offering from the government that says, you guys aren't all a bunch of fuckheads. This, uh, this is a real thing.
shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. There was a, a question that uh, Green Man asked in the uh, in the live chat here because we are live right now, and really the the uh, the Tempest Universe is going to be live as well. As long as I don't have technical issues like today, because that that really wears down on you quite a bit, to be honest, to have to be dealing with fucking microphones for an hour before the podcast start, and no no uh, hope in sight, and then all of a sudden the shit just works. That literally. Just it just worked. This is freaking nuts. But uh, the question was like, in regards to the story about, uh, you know, five point five billion years ago, the uh, the Milky Way just going crazy, teeming with life. You know, three, four headed, you know, aliens, seventeen uh, inch penises, and stuff like that. And so his question was, so if that's what happened to them, because they they got all to all this technology, what the fuck's going to happen to us, Elon Musk? Let's be honest. When you the guy's a genius, right? But when when you see how he's connecting people together, he's not just fucking giving porno to uh, people who are wearing twigs. He is going to link link these fuckers up by chips implanted in people's heads. That's what it comes down to. Like literally, he's building this web of control that uh, even if he doesn't do it, his kid, whatever the fuck the kid's name is. Because it's like all kind of crazy. And I don't even know what he ended up with. Because I guess it was a practical joke or something. But whoever inherits the Elon's empire is going to be the end of humanity. <laughs> this is how we're going to go into 2021. You know, because he's got the, the freaking things in the head. Then he got the uh, Starlinks, you know, going up, bringing internet. It's not bringing internet to the world, dudes. It is bringing a way to connect the world through your cerebellum as he pokes the damn platinum chip into the back of your head. Yeah, it'll be fun. You'll get phone calls right into your brain. Whoopee. But at the end of the day, as we've seen in the last few days, how hackers have shit all over America and its uh, corporations, right? Apparently coming from uh, Russia, that's what's going to happen with these these freaking Starlink satellites and the chips in the heads, man. It The hackers are going to get you. That's going to be the end of humanity. It's that mind meld with technology. I don't know. That's what I think it is. Uh, we'll see what happens, right? Because it would be crazy to have someone try this out. Like, I want to know who's going to link up neurally to these uh, Starlink satellites first because <laughs> for fuck's sake it's going to be ugly it's going to be ugly it's going to be a shit show it's going to be crazy yeah I know he's talking about oh we can use this in uh, in goats to see how they walk and uh, see how well eventually we can uh, manipulate their bodies yeah I don't think so um, that's how I see the end is to be honest it's uh, we're going to get way too intertwined with technology to the point where we're not safe we just we're just gonna be out there and you know oh you know for me i'll be dead by then so i'm okay with it yeah keep doing what you do elon <laughs> keep rocking on this is the end of the podcast i'm uh hey listen I'm, merry christmas to the guys who are in the live chat any and you guys are listening and it's already christmas has already passed it's still the holiday we still got to get through uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's and upwards and onward is all I can say. Thank you guys for listening and uh, a ho 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 to you. Ciao.